and welcome to Press A to Play. This is the week in gaming that has happened, and we're going to give you the biggest news stories in hopefully a fun and informative and definitely opinionated way. My name is Maud Garrett. I'm Chief Bomb of Geek Bomb, and joining me in the news discussions today, I have Taz, a.k.a. Taz Pants. Hello. I've also got Nathan, a.k.a. The Pussy Eater. Is that too soon? Oh, my God, that was <laughs> not a <laughs> Hi. Sorry, he said, a, he said a very funny joke. <laughs> it's going to define you from now on, Nathan. Your time no, yeah. you're on the same. I'm so stoked. So happy. Well, he, it's, um, he basically said he was a scaredy cat, but he decided to, to twist it around a little bit. All right, now we're on the same page here. Uh, we're going to get into the news. <laughs> And uh, first up, Nintendo is definitely angry and red-faced because Amazon has leaked the the new functions for Super Smash Brothers. Nate, take it away. Yeah, so in the last week that has just gone by, Amazon was lovely enough. Amazon seemed to do it quite often. They seem to leak content or game descriptions or images that they really shouldn't. Um, they need to hire How? some Why? people. Why does this happen? I don't know. There's, there's, it's probably Steve from accounting who just keeps on screwing it around. Um, but So the new Smash Bros, it was leaked, revealed a stage creator and a, a board game mode. Um, now, when you say board game mode, it reminded me a lot of uh, Mario Party. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I don't know if I'm hoping for it to be like that because it, it was kind of fun in Mario Party, but it wasn't like the best component of that game. Um, but the description from Amazon says that whether you're creating stages on the gamepad, creating, uh, competing in challenges crafted by Master Hand and Crazy Hand, or outwitting your opponents in a brand new board game mode, there's no doubt that the Ultimate Smash Bros. game has arrived. So right. they seem to be pretty psyched about the whole thing. But Nintendo wasn't. Yeah, no, they weren't too happy about it. It was taken down pretty quickly, but not after people screenshotted the hell out of it and tweeted it everywhere. Right. What kind of repercussions happen from something like that, do you think? Like, can Nintendo then sue Amazon for saying... What was that, Tess? Someone gets fired, no doubt. Yeah. They get, whether they sue or not. I mean, it's all, see, the thing is, it's still good publicity. Like, they probably didn't want that information out just yet, but at the same time, it's boosting all of the interest for that game. It's, it's Sometimes you think about those things and you're like, maybe they did it a little bit on purpose, because um, it, it is a good marketing stunt. Because now we're talking about it. Yeah. I, I wonder think... if it's... Sorry. Yeah. I wonder if it's similar to um, when I was working at EB Games. The Kmart down the hall released... Um, well, all of these Kmarts in the area released Fable 2 three days before its release date because they just arrived in store. No one knew anything, so they put it on the shelf. They sold oh, eight oh. copies. They sold eight copies from that one store because I had friends who worked there and... They told me how many they sold. But because of that, they weren't given Fable. Kmart wasn't given Fable 3 for three months. until As a punishment? Yeah, as a punishment. They weren't given Fable 3 for three months after release. Well, I guess if there are no repercussions on embargoes, I know some people are very, very particular about embargoes, and they do exist for a reason. Like, if you watch a movie two months before it comes out, like, I've seen Horrible Bosses too. I can't say a word about it, and I have to adhere to that embargo. Um, but if you don't, if you're just like, oh, no, I think I'll sell this game, or I think I'll write my review before the deadline, then it was just like, and there's no repercussions, then there's no rules. And rules exist for a reason. But uh, poor Stephen Accounting has obviously just lost his job. Um, <laughs> Halo, for all the big Master Chief fans, um, size apparently will matter. Because it's going to be a lot of a lot of space on your Xbox if you want to fire this one up. Yeah, so I had the lovely privilege of playing the Master Chief Collectors while I was a uh, collection while I was down at uh, EB Expo. Lots of fun. Um, but day one, it has a 20 gigabyte patch, so that you can enable a few features and that you can also play multiplayer. So it seems like the campaign is on the disc. Um, so once you've chucked it into your Xbox One and installed 45 gigabyte from the actual disc itself, Ouch. you've then got a 20 gigabyte patch for the multiplayer content. So you can play the campaign, they say, while the content is downloading, but in total, that's 65 gigs on day one. Now, 
a spokesperson from Microsoft came out and said that they don't want to cut quarters, corners, they don't want to compromise, and they don't want to decrease the quality at all, hence why the patch is so big. Um, but I don't know if there's something I want to get used to with all games. It's, it's funny. I think there's two types of people. You know, like, uh, we've seen so many delays in games now. Watch Dogs a great example. Uh, Dragon Age Inquisition's doing it now as well. They're setting out a release date that they're trying to get to. But say three months out, they're like, we are not close. We can either put out a, a half-finished game or we can give ourselves another six, six 12 months um, and really, really be, give this the best game possible. Someone's like, ah, whatever. Graphics, they're not the most important thing. The storyline and the gameplay is. So if it feels like a great game and it plays well, the graphic, graphics being top-notch, it doesn't really phase me. But then you've got the other people that's like, take all the time you want, just make it good. I think this is now a third factor. It's like, yes, you can get quality and quantity, but it's going to cost you like a tenth of your gig space, your RAM space on gig space, sorry, on your console. Yeah. Do you are you okay with chucking 85, 75 gig for a game? My problem mm. is that I genuinely will not be able to download that much. Like, it'll take me a week to download 20 gigabytes, and that is a significant portion of my monthly downloads. So I genuinely probably will not be able to download that, which is ridiculous. Like, so people with like download limits and or any internet capping, they're the ones suffering the most. And speed as well. I mean, if you want to play, if you buy Halo, I want to play it the day that I buy Halo. I don't want to have to wait three weeks to be able to play multiplayer. It's crazy. Yeah, it's going to be like midnight release. You get the game, chuck it in, go to bed for seven hours, wake up, breakfast, shower. Oh, look at that. I'm only halfway there. Sweet. Yeah. Great. I'll go to work and I'll come back in the afternoon and it might be done. Excellent. There almost seems to be like game degrees. Like, you know, like sometimes when you want a high quality video or you're happy just to have like a low res just so you can watch it, they almost need that with games. It's like, are you willing to sacrifice 20 gig to have this entire game or 85? And if you want the 20 gig, then it's just less time, less space, less quality, but you still get the same game overall. I guess that's the only solution to this. But they're never going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I would want to play it if it was not how it intended to look either. Like, I think... Like, a movie is fair enough. You're going to watch it on a little screen on your laptop anyway. It doesn't really matter what size it is. But, I, yeah, Halo not looking as good as Halo should would just not be worth playing. I think they need to be more considerate like they did with Halo 4. Have an install disk as well because this is going to be, I can guarantee, capping a lot of people's internet, just chewing through it for installs and downloads, etc. But... If they had it like the fourth disc where you had a physical copy, it's like, here, you put this disc in first. It's going to install whatever it wants from that disc onto there. The main reason why they have this 20 gigabyte patch day one is because they had so much content. It's like, we can only fit so much on a 45 gigabyte disc. Well, then get two 45 gigabyte discs. Then you've got even more room, per se. So, just my... I had assumed yeah. that it was, yeah. I assumed it was the up to date, like that that you could they could be patching it up until the day that you downloaded the patch type thing, rather than the fact that it would fit on a disc. Like they obviously have to ship those discs out quite a bit before the game actually will release, so that everyone gets it on time. So I thought yeah. I always assumed that the patching is like we can work on this until the very last second and then give it to you. But if it's it's just only just gone space, gold. It's only just gone gold in the last week. They've only finished making all of their copies. It's just that they said that there is not enough room on this disc wow. for everything we want, and we want to give you guys top quality, but your internet is going to get its ass kicked. Yeah. I want to hear everyone else's thoughts. Whoever's streaming this live, definitely comment below or um, use the Twitter account, which is probably a little easier, at Geek Bombshells. Um, how do you play the games? Like, I, I, everyone must go at this uh, a different way. You've got the people that just consume everything. They buy all the games. They want to play everything. Their pile of shame is phenomenal, but they just churn through them all. Ah, there we go. You've self-diagnosed. I need everything. Everything. All the art books, all the soundtracks, all the game content. You have a everything. collector here. Thank you. Uh, a you I... I'm the kind of person where it's like, I know what kind of game I like, so I'm never going to buy horror games. I'm not that into FPSs, especially when it's like all high-tech guns. I like swords. I like dragons. I like magic. So I would rather 
spend a lot of my time on the one game and just thoroughly beat that and then move on to the next one than having to stop because another one's come out, you know. Taz, what kind of game player are you? I probably sit in between, you know. Like, I I will play anything that I come across and if it's reasonably priced or if it's like I don't have anything else to play, then I'll play a game that I would never play because I would never play The Evil Within or I would never choose to play that on mm. a normal kind of day. But if I'm like, there's literally nothing else releasing at the moment, I'll play it. I will play an FPS. I like FPS. I like the RPGs. So, I, yeah. But I, I don't collect everything um, unless it's like Assassin's Creed. Oh, yeah. Miss 100% right here. Yeah, yeah. I'm also, also miss 12 statues and a portal gun and a skyhook. And that, that kind of crap. <laughs> <laughs> right. I wouldn't All say right. it's hoarding, but it might be hoarding. <laughs> Uh, I'm interested to know what everyone else is like. We've given you three examples. Are you the Nate uh, end? Are you at the Maud end? Or do you sit kind of in the middle where Taz is? It'd be really great to hear your thoughts on how you game and consume these sorts of things. Because I feel that in this Halo kind of uh, argument, that that's, you know, a 75 gig that you've got to commit to. They're trying to give you everything, which means this is the only game you'll be playing. So it caters for people like me, if I liked that sort of game. Um, it does, you know, it's not those people that. If there's like 150 hours of gameplay, is that to you, Nate? Are you just like, I, I don't have 150 hours when I've got 150 games. He'll find it. He'll find the 150 hours. Yeah, that's a that's the thing is like, I make time. I I I enjoy Halo. It was what really got me hooked on gaming. Not the first game that I played, but the first. Uh, character and protagonist that I had a high school crush on. So, yeah, I have to be there straight till the end. By talking about collecting everything, we're going to a little side topic. There's a new Halo um, game also coming out called Halo Spartan Strike on Steam and Microsoft for $6, and it comes out the 12th of December, Halo 2 timeline. So guess who's going to be getting that? Yeah. The collector. <laughs> I need a suit jacket. I feel. Have you watched Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah. I need to get yeah. a little black strip of hair. Yeah, yeah. White I, I tried to say that it was uh, something inappropriate, but it was Benicio del Toro, and I was like, oh, <laughs> don't be rude. <laughs> um, Destiny. Now, Destiny is the little game that's trying. Actually, no, it's the big game that couldn't quite, I guess. So it's the opposite of the yeah. little, little <laughs> track that it could. Um, apparently they're still working on it and there's more things coming. What are these particular things that those still in the Destiny world can expect? Um, so a couple of weeks back they released a massive update and through that update a lot of uh, internal content was also released. If you went to the map there are all these new areas and all these new missions that appeared that were locked. Um, but now more stuff has come out for the expansion pack The Dark Below which is going to be coming out in December not quite sure on the exact date, um, but the level cap has been raised. It used to be you hit 20, then you had to collect gear with light to boost to 30, capped at 30, but now there's been a new raid that's going to be in the expansion pact called Crota's End, and in this raid there has there's a difficulty on there for 32 level 32 players, so it's going to be Raised. I don't know if you're going to have to collect light or if you're going to have to collect garments that have light and darkness in it to boost your level. Oh, I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be sparkly sequins or something like that to make you of a higher level. Of grinding, though. That's the thing. <sighs> so much raids. So many. So many killing of fallen. It's, of the same. It's the same twenty-five fallen in every, like just over and over and over again. Yeah, but there's going to be new gear, harder strikes. Um, there's going to be sparrow mods. There's a, a new, like when you dismantle a weapon, you get weapons parts. There's going to be when you if uh, dismantle a ship, you're going to get ship parts, and you'll be able to upgrade your sparrow. New legendary sparrows. You'll be able to paint them, pretty colors with shaders. Ooh, shaders. Oh, we'll have to get. We'll have to all get pink ones, and we'll have like the pink Sparrow Squad just mm. going through. It'll be awesome. Um, new consumables, new armor for Vanguard. Um, but this is all unofficial. This is just stuff that has been found online at Bungie Net when they release new content there. Um, but yeah, I'm keen. DLC, yes. Happy I days. 
this is another open discussion I want everyone who's watching to pitch in on if you have played Destiny. How many hours have you put into Destiny thus far? I think 158. I'm... What? 158 hours. And I'm a level 27. And then, and and then I another 20 on my account because you played my account for quite a while as well. <laughs> I played your account for seven hours and I got it from a 13 to a 20 in seven hours. But I also I've got a mate. <laughs> I've got a mate who's 29 and, and I don't know what his actual age is, but he's a level 29 and he's played. I think he's just over 300 hours at the moment. Okay. That's a lot. We got it. <laughs> minus, minus eight, seven hours. How much have you put in? Um, probably like probably like seven max. I guess not a lot. I played a lot in the beta, and I uh, I maxed that out like a few times in the beta, and then I just got to the full game, and I was like, there's really they're not adding much more. I and I just kind of got bored with the the grinding and the the playing the same missions a hundred times. It didn't didn't yeah, really you, work out. You and I. Put in like two hours, and then I realized, like, it took me. You were grinding in the same spot, like you were. You didn't realize that you were doing the same missions over and over again. And then, like, um, by the seventh time, I collected a mission, and it was like, you need to kill these again. And I'm like, they're all dead. They've died like nine times. I've killed them so much. But and then you're is... like, do you want to move on? And I was like, yeah, but I've just, I just leveled up quite a bit. A bit. <laughs> that is pretty much destiny in a nutshell. That is, that is the entire game. I feel like I've only really played about six hours. <laughs> it's seriously but, go to this planet, kill this thing. Peter Dinklage will look at a computer screen, yeah. have a look at some explicit images, and find some new sparrow or whatever. You have to defend him while he's there, jerking off in the corner. You kill some bad guys. Yeah, you leave you the planet. You go upgrade. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> How can he even do that if he doesn't have hands? Um, Electric shocks. He's into car batteries on the nipples, stop thing. Oh, right. I didn't know that. Yeah. Peter, you mix. Um, I, it's funny. I put six hours total into Destiny, but I've been playing on average six hours a day since I got Shadow of Mordor. See? If I like a game, I love it. Yeah, that's fair enough. I'll just put in, like, three on every game. Three hours on, not every game, but three hours on, like, half of the games, and Nate will put in 12 hours on every game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just checking in on the comments. Hey guys, Shane Ashby, who's dropped from my last one to this one, awesome, has said, hey, oh, are you writing from two different accounts? This is wigging me out. He says, hey all, how is everyone? That's a great question. Nate, Taz, we'll start off with you, Taz, how are you? I am doing good. It's Sunday. Not looking forward to Monday, but I'm having a good day. Standard. Nate, how are you, Shane? I'm eating. I'm eating caramel macadamia and fudge that I got from the markets this morning, and oh. it's making me salivate so heavily. Rockley Markets more represent, yeah. Probably <laughs> 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 some mum and dad there. That's <laughs> so weird. Um, he also said that he prefers real-time strategy, RTS. He's not a huge fan of multiplayer, and he prefers campaigns. That's a pretty interesting way to game as well. I never really thought about the RTS. Uh, if that's the case, Shane Ashby, my underrated game is one that you should definitely listen out for because I was hooked and it is your perfect game. James Hassel says, ooh, origami overlay. Ten seconds in and Maud is Maud. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> it was an inside joke that I tried to explain to everyone but thought it would be better off just to get out of it anyway. Uh, Shane contributed again saying, for Nintendo it sounds similar to the Deadpool test footage to generate interest. And Shane, you were one of the first people that posted that on our Geek Bomb page. I did not forget. That's very, very true. People will dangle that carrot. Oops, leak. What, what do you think? What do you reckon? Ah. Uh, and then Carlo just recommends that we just all game on portable hard drives. So, yeah, but that's expensive. Microsoft makes you expensive. use their, their special ones, right? Don't you have to use only Microsoft portable hard drives? I've never done it. Not anymore, I don't think. Not anymore? I guess no, that works. Oh, there was a new patch that came out for the Xbox One, and I'm pretty sure that allows you to do that. Very similar to the new firmware 2.0 that's going to be coming out for the PlayStation 4. You can use your external hard drive to share screenshots, and there's going to be a lot more external hard drive use for both consoles with the new firmware. Yeah, that's reasonable. I tend to just... I don't really go back and play old games, so like once I've played it, I'll probably delete it off the hard drive and just... 
go to the next, move on to the next game. If so I finish a game, it is finished. So if seven, eight months time, they bring out DLC, I've moved on emotionally. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So it doesn't happen. Yeah, exactly the same. Yeah, but if I haven't started a game and I don't play it then and there, and another game comes in and steals my interest, when I am in a dry spell, I will go back through my pile of shame, and that's what happened with Bioshock Infinite um, semi-recently, where I was like, ooh, this got under the radar, put it in, and then, like, what, a year or two after everyone else, I was like, oh! <laughs> Everyone's like, you're just finding that out? And I'm like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. That's the, I have the same... That's the same for me. Like, if I, if I didn't enjoy the campaign or if I didn't enjoy like the character or, or I didn't fall for it, then I will get rid of it. But I've got like a collection of games down here which I'm never going to trade in. I'm always going to hold on to and I'm always going to, on those sh- shitty stormy days where I'm alone, I'll pull out Halo 3 or Halo 1 and run through the campaign again. Just for nostalgia. You really are a collector. We're going to have to call you. What is the character of Benicia del Toro? He's the collector, but he does he have an actual, right? Does he have an he actual name? The collector. He's the collector. All right, you are, that's your nickname now, Nate. You're Nate the collector. And you have to do the voice every time. Yeah. It's going to be great. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, lastly, in okay. news, there is a trailer for a game called Hatred that everyone has been talking about. Uh, I've seen it. It's incredibly violent. It's basically like a guy who hates everyone and everything, and he doesn't have any self-worth, and he doesn't want to live on this planet anymore. And so to quote him, I'm going to take out as many as I can as as I'm going down. So he just kills innocent people. It's a bloodbath, and it's, you know... Nate, I I think we kind of figured out pretty quickly that there's a very split reaction from this. There's those people that just think this is abhorrent, that this is shocking, that this should not be a game at all, that this goes against what society stands for and that the school shootings that we're seeing here in the States, which is probably a risk of my life every day that I'm here, we don't need <laughs> that behaviour to be encouraged at all. Um, but then you're citing that free speech is a real thing, that if someone wants to make this game, then that's their prerogative um, and that we can't shut them down from bringing out this. Taz, yeah. what's your thoughts? I don't know, I think we've had we've had similar sort of uh, the games that are pushing the boundaries a little bit indie games particularly um, I can't really particularly pick one out, but you know, there's been some brutal stuff that we've seen happen in games, there's those games where you're like raping people or you're torturing people and it always it's always that immediate moment of like, I don't know if we should really be able to play this, but then it's your choice to play it, so if you don't like it, don't play it, like if you're worried about what it's going to do to people just stay away from it. And if you stay away from it, then they might not continue to make it or they'll, they won't make sequels or whatever. It's just like, it's all that. And giving it attention, I mean, not that I think it's, that it's going to be the worst game ever and I think that they should make whatever they want, but you're just giving it the attention this, to, to make people want to play it now. So good work, guys. You're doing the exact opposite of what you want to be doing. Yeah, I agree. I have not posted about it. I haven't commented on it. I have not shared it. I would like to bury it. Um, I think that it's these sort of games, like this is the, the fodder that those mainstream anti-gaming, all gamers are violent, all gamers hate everything. This is what they need to have their argument. And it's like, come on, guys. So but that doesn't represent all gamers. It represents one person making a game. Like, I don't so know. I just think. Life. <laughs> If you can play a game that is, you know, making realistic people on The Sims and then murdering them, it's like, it's just as bad, but it's in a completely different way. I think it's just whatever whatever light that we paint those games in. So It's, it's, it's true. It's like, I mean, there's some fun ones. Yeah. It's like, hey, let's make a house and take all the doors out and watch them pee themselves to death. Ha, ha, ha. And then there's, you're building and it's centered around a protagonist that is so empty and he has the psychotic makeup of the worst villains out there, and the wor- you know the makings of a of a villain, the scary ones, is that they have nothing to lose, and they this same thing where they want to take everyone down with them. That is a psychotic nature. This I don't know. I think that if this kind of even motivates or inspires one person, 
then the game should not be there. Yeah. Yeah, I That's agree. Me. There should definitely be some, I don't know, some warnings or something on it, but I guess people will... And it can't be made, though, can it? Like, the censorship laws in there, if you can't get a game back ho home because there's, like, a little anal probe in there and the whole game was banned, this is just a mass slaughtering, and it's so graphic and so violent. Surely the censorship comes in and wins. You know what? You push the boundaries so far that we actually can't release this. Is this a... Is it a... Big title though, or is it an indie game? I don't really know a lot about it. Indie. It's indie. It's an indie. Yeah. So like they'll release it regardless. No one they're not gonna they're not gonna care. If it's not on Steam, they'll put it on their own website. The thing the thing is that I find oh, kind of concerning about the whole concept of it is that they've basically just come out, they've shown you it's just murdering civilians, killing as many people as you can before this guy hope potentially inevitably just ends his life. Um the rationalization of the developers is that they're not trying to be polite or nice. They're showing you that this is their game. This is what it's going to be as. If you if you like it, give it a shot and let us hear your feedback. If you don't like it, then don't play it. They're not forcing you to play this game. Um, and by people going, look at this. Look at this shitty game. It's very, very it's violent. It's very, very so. crude. These are all the things. It's showing it to people who wouldn't necessarily see it. And... We were talking about um, like psychological issues and stuff like that. If we go over to GTA 5, you torture someone and you get to choose the torture apparatus. But the thing is, is that it's like, oh, that's that GTA you... 5. No, but they're also... Yeah, the... I know there is the option. Yeah, it's like if you want to hurt someone, you can. But if you don't, I think it's like to only progress in the game, you have to adhere to something that you don't want to do. Like, if your morals kick yeah. in in this game and you're like, I don't want to rape this person, I don't want to murder them, I don't want to torture them, I would rather leave them alone. Like, it's the whole Paragon Renegade, dark side, light side. But if it's only, you can only do bad things, and, like, the whole first part of the game was fine, you had no problem with it, but this is, like, yeah. what's stopping you from progressing, so you're forced to do something that you're not comfortable with, I have a problem with that. Yeah, this I, game I see where fine. you're coming from, but I think yeah. it's going to be I a curiosity. You turn the game People off, though. You don't keep playing. It. Yeah, turn it off. <laughs> it's just, it's like, I just don't think that it's it's going to have an effect on people that people think it's going to. It's like, it's not going to make people murder people. And if, they, if they're if they going to murder someone, they're going to do it before this game. It's not going to push them over the edge. Um, yeah, look, yeah, there have been shootings. They'll, the they'll find decades. another game to do exactly the same thing in. It's like, yeah, it's just all a bit pedantic. It is just a marketing scheme. It's just giving it attention and... So I agree with that. Doing. It's not going to shut it down. It's like, this game is not going to go anywhere. This is what they wanted. Now they've got it. Now they'll find a way to release it, regardless of how they have to do it. So, I just think it's so haunting, you know, like, I think it's worse than now that I live in the States. Um, but that boy who's 20, 21, who wanted to kill every member of his sorority because he was 21 years old and no one would sleep with him, and he's like, I'm a good-looking guy, and I just can't get laid. So I'm going to kill every girl that I see. It's like, what? How did you? And he did. He went on this rampage, killed five people, and he got taken out um, by the law enforcement or because he crashed his car, whatever it was. But these people exist, and I just don't think that they... I mean, if playing hatred gets that out of their system where they can kill fake people and it feels like killing real people and that stops them from actually taking lives, that's fine. But if it's like, if it's like, oh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's like the porn. It's so accessible to everyone. And when that stops working, they want to go for the real thing. So it could have that effect. If they slay all these people and they're slaughtering, and that kind of gives them a little bit of a fix and a satisfaction, and then that stops working, that will then encourage them to get their fix by doing the real thing. I've watched way too much Law and Order SVU, guys. Is that, is that not the same as, like, it's them not playing a gateway like I feel like I feel like it, it's the same as like oh, I play a driving game and I and I speed you know I play Forza and I drive this incredibly fast car around a track now I'm gonna go and speed in my car like I just I just don't think that the the relation has to be what? I think because I've been playing a lot of driving games I am I take a lot more risks when I drive they are calculated risks I feel like I'm more perceptive on a road because I've played a lot of driving video games. But I don't you're think not going to go right and now. run someone over, though. You're not going to go GTA and and. But I don't you know, play GTA, and I don't like. Yeah. I don't need GTA, and it's not a fix that I'm that I'm having that I that you know, 
takes it away from me doing it in the streets. Do I want a pet dragon? Yes. <laughs> I do. Would you stab you know someone with a sword after playing Dragon Age or whatever? Like, if you if had, had access a to a sword? If there was a sword there and someone was breaking into my house, there would be a Z in, or maybe I'd do an M. Yeah. Where are my dragons? <laughs> very similar to you saying that, like, you play a lot of, you play racing games and you go out in the street and they're very calculated risk. On the opposite yeah. side of that, I take, I, hi mum, hi dad, if you're watching, um, I speed quite a bit and I will do stupid little things like I may or may not turn right when I'm not meant to because that's just how I am, rock hardcore to the bone. But the thing is is that I, it's not because of driving games, it's because my parents when I was growing up, they saw the need for me to take um, defensive driving courses and I've taken two defensive driving courses where I was out on a tarmac and got to... Huh? Is that with Amy? Yeah, there was one of them with Amy, yeah. I did that Through high one. school. Yeah, you yeah. Have to the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and because I've, because I've done that, I feel more comfortable in a car and I feel safer and I feel like I can handle a car better in particular situations. I have been in particular situations where I've handled it well and I've been in particular situations where I've handled it poorly. But I just take those risk risks is. not because... Yeah, I take that risk not because of... Games. I take it because I've taken driving and courses. So I agree that every single person is unique. There are so many variables, so many factors that you cannot blame or put it onto one specific thing. But I feel in this particular case, because there are there's access to guns here, there's so many school shootings, and for some it seems like the answer. I just think that even if one person uses this to take a life, then this game is not worth it. It's oh, not absolutely. worth it my life. Yeah. But can I'm you gonna make prove that that's why it was... One day. Don't you remember I sound like a mother already? <laughs> Back in my time. <laughs> many, too many inappropriate jokes. I don't think it would work. Pause Cool, I'm back. Um, <laughs> let's move on to what we're playing at the moment. Tails, let's kick it over to you. What are you playing? Uh, I know Evil Within. Do you want to give us a little talk about your first impression? I will, I will. Um, so, as most of you will have seen, <laughs> or some of you will have seen, I played um, probably the first hour and a half of the game live on Twitch, um, and I handled it a lot better than I thought I would. It was quite good, because I'm not quite good at horror games, but it was actually significantly less scary than I thought it would. Comparing it to Outlast, which Maud played um, the next night, Outlast is very... It's suspenseful, and you're going to turn around every corner, and there could be something there. And that that sort of fear gets to me really badly. This one, apart from the very first beginning sequence, or where I'm up to in the game, anyway. After that point, I then I got a gun, and there were there were quite a few enemies everywhere, but I was able to take them out. And if I can kill something, it doesn't scare me. So, um, in terms of like a, a horror game, I didn't really get that kind of vibe from it, other than the first bit where I was sort of like being here with a chainsaw, and there was a guy chasing me and stuff. Um, but then again, then that is to say I'm only about, uh, you know, I'm in the, an hour and a half into a 15 to 20 hour game, so it'll get worse. I don't think I'm even into the, the actual part of the game yet. It's sort of like the beginning part. Um, but the only other problems I had was like, it has a weird like cinematic locked screen, so it's letterboxed for starters. They want to make it look mm -hmm. like a movie, so you've got widescreen. That's, yep. not, like, that's not a good way to play a game. It doesn't feel organic. Um, yeah. it, it just the movement of the camera and stuff, it's sort of like I would I would get stuck behind, the camera would get stuck behind my character and it's like if I'm trying to look around a corner or if I'm trying to like see where all the enemies are and I can't mo like manipulate the camera in a way that I need to be able to see everything, not a good way to play a horror game. It's so, a hindrance and not a, an asset, yeah. Absolutely. Um, that was probably the only thing that I sort of noticed about it so far. The rest of it's pretty pretty basic. It feels a lot like a Resident Evil game. Yeah. Um, which is fun. So I'm, I'm keen to say I'm keen, keen to play more because it's at this stage I don't even think that I've hit the actual fear part. Um, but it's definitely fun. It's definitely fun to watch more than I would any other horror game. I think just because it feels like an action action adventure rather than a, like a suspense. Okay. Huh. A lot of people on the fence. I think from the reviews that I've read about it. I mean, I'm never going to play it. So for what it's worth, it's not really worth much. 
Uh, well, I mean, dude, it's not as scary as Outlast. If you can play Outlast, you can I play I didn't this game. play Outlast. I cried. <laughs> I'm a grown woman. I don't want people to see that. Um, Are you really a grown woman, though? I'm a woman! Wait. <laughs> there it is. Buy Geek Bomb t-shirts, guys. They're still on store.geekbomb.net. Smooth. Um, yeah, that's, Nate, what, you've been doing... that's what I'm paying attention to. <laughs> Geek Bomb match. You've got one, too, though. <laughs> Shout out to your tats, kidding. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah, you like that one, don't you? I like, no, I like Geek Bomb. Uh, you've, been, yeah. you've been working on a Destiny review. That's going to be out this week, but what can people expect uh, from your review? Um, people can expect me liking it and saying a lot of positive things about it, but also saying that it's nothing special. It Ooh. is addictive. Um, yeah, no, like, it's... I'm probably going to cop some shit for that. But it is a fun game that has a lot of interesting aspects about it. It is a combination of WoW, Borderlands, and Halo. It does have a lot of work to do, but it seems like Bungie is like listening to what the people are saying, what they want. Um, so that's, that's definitely beneficial. There's going to be a lot of content that is coming out. A lot of people were really a bit spectacal about... Um, the content, it's like, oh, what the hell, the game isn't even out yet, and they're already saying that there's got DLC for this date and DLC for this date. The game mustn't be that great on its own if they've already got this DLC planned. Right. But that's what the game was meant to be from the get-go, 10 years of resources put into it so that it can that's you know, right. evolve so and grow into something actually, unknown. Does this make it an underrated game? With 10 years of resources put into a game, a lot of more people were disappointed than they were excited, right? Yeah, well, Bungie brought out Halo. Halo came out. Halo was on its own. It didn't have any DLC. It was just Halo, and it was an amazing game which really drove um, Xbox sales, and yeah. since then, Xbox and Halo have been very, very closely tied, and then they bring out this game called you know, Destiny. Um, it's not like Halo. It's an evolving live game, um, and... A lot of people were trying to make the comparison back to Halo, it seemed, even though it wasn't a sole FPS. It was something completely different from that, but they were still trying to make those ties and comparisons along the way. Um, I love it, not as much as I love Halo, but I've had Halo for a lot longer and put more hours into Halo than what I have into Destiny. But if we think about it, 10 years of resources, the game that we're currently exposed to is probably just the basic core of the game. Um, just the basic, basic principles. And when the DLC comes out, it's just going to add on to that experience and it's just going to become a far bulkier game. So, I love a metaphor. It's like they've been working for 10 years just to plant a seed and when the game comes out, it's a little sapling. And it's like, no, but it's going to grow. It's going to grow. And then people are like, but there's trees over there. <laughs> yeah, like, that's exactly right. Yeah. No, we're watering. But What's that's, this? What's that's, this? It's an like, MMO. That that is what an MMO is. It's going to start small. No. Yeah, but people aren't seeing it as an MMO. People are seeing it as an online yeah. FPS with MMO yeah. elements, but it That's is, how is I meant it. to be. That's exactly it's not MMO. MMO. It's not. It, you should be comparing it to, like, Warcraft, not Halo. Yeah, I got addicted to Warcraft, no. and I played six hours of Destiny. I had to leave my piece but that's, I think... road because of WoW. <laughs> oh, Mordiski, I miss you. I'm so sorry. It was the, that's the MPS thing, though. That's why. You're just not much of an FP FPS fan. No. If there was a sword there, you probably would have played it. <laughs> Halo has a sword. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> at the moment, I am playing a lot of Shadow of Mordor. If you have subscribed to YouTube, uh, our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash geekbombshells, you would see it there. Give that a, a watch um, if you haven't played the game mm -hmm. yet um, because I only really talk about the first sort of 15 hours of the game. It's how I tackled it because there's a few ways you can go about it um, and I just got a little bit distracted and didn't follow the usual main progression, um, but being distracted by something awesome isn't a bad thing. I've been really having a lot of fun with that one, but the review is up if you want to check it out. Moving along, Taz, you had um, we'll kind of power through the rest of this since we talk a lot. Um, you had the LG event. Can you quickly tell us what that was about? Yeah, yeah. Um, it is pretty basic. I mean, we were invited by LG. It was also Xbox and Namco to check out LG's new range of sort of like 4K 
curved screen TVs, incredible looking TVs that are mm. not out in Australia yet. They're out in the next couple of weeks. Um, they had a whole range on offer. The whole idea of the night was to show you that you, know, you can experience really, really impressive gaming in your lounge room rather than by yourself in your room. So the focus was on multiplayer gaming. There was some FIFA happening. Um, there was some racing games. There was sort of like showing all the different ways you can you can interact with other people. The way that the TVs work, you can like be sitting on the side of the TV and still see it. Obviously, okay. they look incredible. The 4K looks incredible when you hook up a PC. So there was like some driving simulators that looked unbelievable, especially just yeah, it was it was insane. But obviously, the console stuff was upscaled. Still looks great. Much better than. The and this shitty little 24-inch uh, monitor that I'm playing games on. My... Yeah, I'm going to write an article about the new range, what they've sort of got coming out. Um, so check that out. It'll be up later in the week. But definitely they worth keeping an eye on. Yes. On it. And then it I got like in an elevator. Oh, how long for? Like 40 minutes? Oh, that's right. really <laughs> confronting. That's really... Ooh. Yeah. We played celebrity heads. I mean, it was all right. Oh, did you play like this one? <laughs> heads up. I like that game. <laughs> so like, yeah, well, we didn't we didn't want to waste any phone battery, but we had I had business cards, so we were writing on business cards. We oh made, Jesus! We, we made it work. That's right. Yeah. Jesus. Um, we have been streaming leading up to Halloween, and we will continue to. We're streaming horror games. Taz just mentioned that she played The Evil Within. We had Tegan and Sabre play PT. What's that one? I didn't go near it. That is an, that was an interactive demo for the new Silent Hills game. No thanks. Um, so it's like a 30 minute... I think they played it twice. Apparently it's bloody terrible. Plays through. Yeah, they're on Twitch still. Um, yeah, I would not play that. I would not play that. Twitch.tv forward slash geekbomb if you want to check out any of the previous streams that we have done, uh, including mine. I played Outlast. I... Uh, I thought the hashtag was pretty clever. Hashtag, how long will Maud outlast? Uh, a lot of people saying no more than 10 minutes. Uh, a few of you generously saying that I would last half an hour. Fuck you all. It was actually an hour. An hour. There was a lot of stalling, but, a lot of deep breaths. I think I had a <laughs> To be fair, it, you had a panic like 15 minutes of, of the game. You did have a panic attack. You got yeah. to about 15 minutes of the game, possibly less. Is so that really, what that was? I think I you only that. outlasted. The only other time where I've had that was when... Chucky jumped out at me at the Universal House of Horrors and I developed a of little people. <laughs> I love that video so much. <laughs> oh, it is the best but You went at the actual, you went at, at the haunted house. My friends left me and Chucky, Chucky jumped out of the... I thought it was a robot, guys. I thought Chucky was a robot. And I went up to the, the music box, the toy box, to see if it was a robot because it came out in quite a mechanical manner with its knife. And then it jumped out and ran after me. And I slammed myself up against the wall and I dropped. And I did that thing that I can't breathe, which I think is the panic attack. And then I didn't know I couldn't touch you. It had a knife. So I had to army crawl my way out of the room. Oh, I was so hysterical. That was so not okay. <laughs> uh, but if you do want to check out the two parts, because I think I accidentally um, shut off the broad broadcast halfway through because I was a little bit panicky, um, it is up at twitch.tv.geekbomb. You can check that out. Um, now, some big, big, big news. At PAX in Melbourne, and pretty much the whole team's going to be there. I'm not because it's so far away and it's so hard. Are you giving two thumbs up because I'm not going to be there, Nate? That's really upsetting. I'm so sorry. No, one thumb up for you not being there. Another thumb up oh, for everyone ma else making it. Yeah. But we are on Friday night at the Wombat Theatre at 8.30 doing Gig Bomb's Ultimate Trivia Showdown. I've been on the hunt for two team captains and a host that I feel are really going to step up their game in Melbourne for our trivia showdown. I'll be writing all the questions and the segments. I've already started on that one, so it's going to be really, really cool. We're going to base things around about four or five different topics, games, comics, books, TV, mu uh, and movies. Um, so there'll be a lot of crowd interaction. Uh, every single round, there's going to be a person from the audience acting as a lifeline, which will be pretty cool. Uh, and we've got some prizes to give away. But in the team captains, team number one will be captained by a television and radio host and game reviewer. He's an epic writer. 
He hosts Steampunks on ABC Network. It is Paul Verhoeven. Very excited to have him along. I've worked quite closely with him on a few things in Australia. He is going to rock. And uh, for a little bit of girl power in there, uh, she not only uh, has started up her own blog, and that's been very, very successful, but she also works for uh, Button Mash. Should really have Yeah, this. Button Bash. Button Bash, thank you. I, my first show, you know what Geek Bomb was going to be called? Button Pushers. And for three months, it was. There's a fun fact that no one knew. Uh, Button Bash. She does that. She hails from Brisbane. She does a radio show on Triple Z there, which I have guessed on once, and it was lovely. Uh, Alana Pierce will be team captain number two. So who is going to host the ultimate trivia showdown? I remember when I submitted this idea to Yug, who is uh, looking after all things PAX, he said that you need someone that can really, really carry this. He said not everyone can host trivia. Well, guess what, guys? Comedian Dave Callan certainly bloody well can, and he will be. So this is going to be the best night, and I can't wait for you guys to have the best time if you're going there. So there you go. That is news that you've heard here first. We'll be making that announcement official on all of our social medias. All right, to finish things off, let's chuck a little round of underrated. This is where we have two minutes, possibly 90 seconds, depending how long you offed, to sell a game <laughs> that has meant so much to you, it doesn't matter when it came out or on what platform because there's so many emulators or whatever that you can probably play it. We are going to pitch it to you. Now, last time I play, uh, played Underrated, Tegan got really addicted to the game. She messaged me and she's like, I cannot stop playing it. And two weeks later, she's like, I am still playing it. It was called 10 million uh, and that was an app. Uh, but Taz will kick off with you. What is your underrated yes. game for this week? Your time starts now. Cool. I'm going to go with an app to... Um, it started out as... Actually, it was on browser, so Mac, uh, Mac and PC. I started playing it on Mac, and it's a little game called Winter Bells. Um, it is the most... It's now on iPhone and I believe Android as well. It is the most simple game. There's one mechanic. You are a tiny little cute white rabbit, um, and you jump. And what you do is you jump onto bells and you sort of like start on the ground and then you go up through space, I guess. So you're a space rabbit. Um, and you, as you go, the bell starts to get smaller and smaller and harder and harder to hit. So that's basically it. That's the whole game. If you miss a bell, you fall down and you're dead and you have to start again. But it is like it's the most tranquil game that you will play. It's just like a few colors. You've got the really nice space scenery. You've got the little cute rabbit that, that jumps everywhere. And this music that is like, it haunts me because I play it for so, so long. Um, and basically, yeah, you, could just, you just keep going. As you jump up, there's little birds you have to hit and they like double your score. Um, and my score is quite impressive at this point because I've been playing it for a while. I don't even know what the number is. It has too many, too many digits. Um, but when it's did you start playing this? I, I play it all the time. I think, I've been, I mean, it came out on Mac and PC like years ago, probably like seven or eight years ago. Um, and only I only noticed that, that it was on iPhone a couple of years ago or a year and a half ago, and I started playing it on iPhone then. And so the touchpad is a lot easier than using a mouse to jump the rabbit up and down. But yeah, it's really cute. Um, I think it's like three dollars on iPhone. It's worth it if you just like, want to sit there and zone out for a while. It's great. Hey, timing. Cool, cool, cool. Winter bells. Write that down, everyone. I've definitely been writing everyone's ideas down so that I can play them later. Nate, you are up. What yeah. is your underrated game? Your time starts now. Okay, this underrated game is very, very basic and very, very simple. It's been out since 2008, and it is Audio Surf. It's really... <laughs> I actually really, really enjoy this game. Um, this game, basically, you upload a uh, music file from your computer up into the game, and it generates a track. From this track, you have different levels, you have different little spaceships that you've got to use, and there are different objectives on each track. Um, I play a very simple one where all I have to do is collect colored bars and dodge the gray bars. Whenever I download a new song or a new album, I actually go through the entire thing on Audio Surf, and I there's like online... Um, scoreboards and stuff like that. I constantly get sent emails every now and then when my score gets beaten and I get knocked out of the top 10 ranking for that song. Um, really, really basic, but it is awesome if you've got a spare uh, couple of minutes here and there to listen to a song and also play a game uh, simultaneously. 
I think I've actually got in this game, I think I've almost got 150 hours of gameplay and audio surf, and it, the longest song I played in there um, was a 15 minute song, which was done by an artist named BT, and then I've played very, very short songs that have only gone for like two or three minutes. So 150 hours is something that is I'm very impressed with and probably should get a life. Uh, lots of lots of fun, really, really colourful. I was playing on a shitty yeah. laptop, and it wasn't working, and then I got a better PC, and now I can play it better. Where do you get it from? Where do you buy it? Steam. It's like five or ten bucks. I think there's an Audio Surf 2, which is out at the moment, but I'm still stuck with one because I just can't give up on it just yet. Uh, guys, if you are watching this, you can vote for which underrated game you think that you'd like to try out the most. Uh, it is my turn now. <laughs> you can kind of guess what kind of game it's going to be. All right, my time now. Uh, Shane said that he likes real-time strategy games, and it just brought to mind a game that I'm absolutely obsessed with on the PC. It's called Heroes of Might and Magic 3. There are six of them now, but three is the best one, the restoration of Arathia. Um, it's done by 3DO. It came out in 1999. Uh, basically, this is a real-time strategy game where you have a castle, um, and like a lot of these building strategy games, you have to build up the elements of your castle, your stronghold, uh, you know, how you build your, your army kind of thing, and it's a turn-based. And then you've got your main hero, and he travels across the land, and there's a little treasure chest that you can open, and you have to collect resources. Now, you're playing either against another character or um, the computer, and you can play up to sort of like eight teams at one time. And I used to play with my family, and I'd be in a stronghold, and they'd be in a castle, and someone else would be in a rampart, and they had centaurs and shit. It was so cool. Um, and you'd have to sit down at the computer, do your turn, get up, call the next person up, and then sit down. So my whole family were involved in this game. It was so much fun. The best part about this game are the monsters in it. Um, the, the, each of the di different themed castles had their own sort of eight to ten monsters, and then you could upgrade them once. They were so cool, um, and that's where I learned what a trogl troglodyte was. Uh, and I, you know, you could play as a phoenix. All these really, really cool monsters. That's the best part. 3D O P C Heroes of Might and Magic Three turn-based strategy. The best game. That's my time. So there you have it. Three underrated games. Games you may not have heard of before. Maybe you have. Who knows? Vote for which one that you'd like to check out. If you do check it out, do you agree with us? Was it a really awesome game? I'd love to hear it from you. And as we wrap things up, I'm just going to take it back to the comments, see what everyone's been saying, because there's a lot of you having a big chat skis. Oh. Um, hold on, I've got to look. That was me checking the video. That was me from like five minutes ago, so it's wigging me out a little bit. Um, <laughs> we've got... Marcus Townsend, hey there. I am a sword whore in Halo. Yes, you coined that phrase back in Halo multiplayer. That is true. There, there, there is always a sword whore. Someone knows where to find it, they'll get it, and they'll splice the shit out of everyone. Well done. I will use that. Um, James uh, Hassel says, wasn't there a post on Tumblr suggesting that these guys behind Hatred had affiliations to neo-Nazi-esque groups? The Hatred Devs. Trust Tumblr. Trust Tumblr to decide that. Tumblr sure. is a, an, an accurate source on the internet. <laughs> uh, I think that's something that someone would definitely say. Whether it's true or not is almost irrelevant because they're going to be put together anyway. Um, oh, Shane, notice that the thumbs down button hasn't been hit yet. Yes! <laughs> our, our number one hater hasn't found this video. We've been so sneaky and they haven't hit it yet. Oh, that's really cool that there's none there. Everyone press like so there can be like 20 likes and no, no down thumbs. That's really awesome. Um, Trump Crane wants everyone to remind wants to remind everyone, sorry, that I spilt wine or beer all over the couch. It was beer. I had a glass of wine first. I swapped to a beer. Thank God, because I poured it all over a white couch. Don't tell Alicia anyone. Um, Ralphie says that the evil within is created by the guy from Resident Evil. And if I like Outcast, I didn't. I should try Alien Isolation. I won't, because the alien cannot be killed and you must run and hide as well. That sounds frightening. No, thank you. Ben has a fun fact for us. He said that Halo was originally a Mac title and that Steve Jobs debuted it at Macworld at, a, at the Macworld conference. But Microsoft acquired Bungie and made them convert it to Xbox. That is an awesome fun fact. Uh, Damien decided with our evil 
started evil within Aliens Isolation and has given him so much real tension in which he loves uh, for horror games. No cheap jump scares. They get boring after a while. You're immune. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as hatred goes, Shane says that it basically gives politicians, parent groups, the uh, and parent groups, the ammunition needed to label all games as violent and to try even harder to limit what we can buy and release at shops. That's kind of what I was trying to say. So we can't on the buy it at shops though. It's going to be an indie title. It's going to be download. So, but because the that exists. Suck it. They're, going to, yeah. they're going to try and squash what you can have access to, what what is sold in shops. I think that that's that. They just need one thing as a scapegoat, and I think this will be it. Uh, Trump says I did a great job at Outlast, and he said that no one ever looks forward to Mondays. Uh, we asked Shane how he was. He says it is good. He's itching for another st uh, stream on Twitch for drinking, and yeah, he used his phone to log in on instead of the lappy and that's why there's two accounts there. Jane asks if he's the only one here. Nah buddy, there's a whole party of us. And he says that 150 hours in an MMO including Endgame is pretty standard. A huge chunk of that is idle time just fucking around waiting for start group content. Totally. That's, uh, oh Carlo has said he's put in, this is pretty cool. 70 hours on Destiny, 27 on Titan, oh, he's got a level 27 Titan and a level 24 Warlock. Nate, step up your game, son. Well, sorry for being busy through the week. I apologise. <laughs> you must quit your job, and then you must kill everyone that you've ever met, regardless of what That's it. I'm going to go on a rampage. <laughs> Everyone's dead now. Everyone. Guys, that has been uh, the week in gaming news. This is the press A to play. The easiest thing to do is press a button and have goodness come to you. Uh, you can catch us on Twitter, on Facebook. Make sure you subscribe. Click that thumbs up button. Fuck the guy who does the thumbs down because now that we've brought it up, it'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll catch you very, very soon. This has been Geek Bomb. Bomb's been dropped. And the bomb has been dropped. <laughs> oh. oh, that was perfect.